Barry, dizziness is not a common presentation in general practice. However, every time we are faced with a patient with dizziness, it induces anxieties in us. How can we manage dizziness appropriately? So, Nasif, the good news is that there are some very common diagnoses that you will be able to make in general practice quite easily, and there is effective treatment for that, those diagnoses. Then the second thing is that you need to be aware of the diagnoses that you should not be making in general practice. Now, by knowing what things you should be looking for mm -hmm. and knowing what things you need to be referring quickly or less quickly, depending on the situation, that should result in a rebalancing of the referral pattern from GP practice to specialist services. Now, th there are some important things that we need to get to grips with, and there will be a section on myths, and there are many myths that are around, both in general practice and in hospital practice, that we need to break, which will allow us to rebalance that referral pattern. Now, very briefly, we will go into these details further on, but specifically, GPs should be looking for cardiovascular causes of recurrent dizziness, such as cardiac dysrhythmias, which you can do look simply with a 12 EDCG, mm -hmm. postural hypotension, which is very common in, in general practice. We'll have a section on that. Then a very common cause of recurrent vertigo, and probably the commonest cause in the world, is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV, which is the acronym. We will have a section on that to show you how to diagnose it and how to treat it or even cure it with a single maneuver w within less than two minutes. Response rates are high, 70 to 80% with a single maneuver. Finally, uh, migraine is a, also a quite a common cause of recurrent dizziness, and we will have a section on migraine to allow GPs to be able to manage this without anxiety. The other thing that you, GPs need to understand is some of the diagnoses that they're currently managing in the community, you shouldn't be because you don't have the tools to be able to make that diagnosis and manage that patient correctly and effectively. So we will discuss that in, in more depth. So I think overall, in summary, we'll allow you to deal more effectively with the diagnoses that are easy to, to, to look at, easy to treat and common. and allow you to identify diagnoses or at least presentations that you should not be dealing with. And so that will reduce your anxiety. Thank you, that's very helpful. So what are these conditions that we should not be dealing with in general practice? So acute vertigo, first presentation of acute vertigo is, tr is quite tricky to diagnose, even mm -hmm. for an expert. There are three conditions which can look very similar. And they are labyrinthitis or vestibular neuritis, vestibular migraine, and stroke. Mm -hmm. Patients with uh, labyrinthitis or vestibular neuritis can be managed in the community, but only once the diagnosis has been established. Okay. And that diagnosis can only be established by an expert. The, obviously, GPs know what to do with a stroke. If they think this is a stroke, they send a patient straight to hospital. But also vestibular migraine can present as a, in the first instance, instance, just like a stroke, or it mm -hmm. can even look quite similar to a vestibular neuritis. So if a patient presents with an acute first onset vertigo, then I think actually the GP should ask the expert in an acute setting for an opinion on the diagnosis. And Nassif, we will have a section on acute vertigo and we'll be helping GPs to identify those patients that they should be referring acutely. Okay. Thank you.